something. doing something. And remember oh, how he got it. He studied with Father Maximilian mm-hmm. Hell. Back in those days, Paracelsus talked about, you know, magnets and so on. And he studied with Hell, Father Hell. And the idea was that Maximilian bloodletting was the cure for everything in those days. So, you know, I'm feeling a little ill. Better take a quart of blood. You know, so they use a razor hold, on your wrist. Hold the rag. You'd hold a stick. Yeah, a stick. And the stick would get all gory after many patients because the barbers were the ones who did bloodletting. Barbers were surgeons. They set bones Hence and the, things. Yeah. And that's the barber's pole. It's the bloody stick with the bandage around it. That became the barber's pole. In more recent times, they've added blue as well to make it more patriotic, I guess. But <laughs> it's less bloody. Less bloody. Blue. But Mesmer studied. And the idea was they would pass a lodestone magnetite over the area where they made the incision and the bleeding would stop. Now, we note indirect suggestion with this. Mm-hmm. You're causing platelet aggregation, which is going to cause a So it wasn't form. even Mesmer at the, t- it wasn't no. even, ne- well, sorry, that wasn't Mesmer anyway. Right. Mesmer was later. This was prior to Mesmer where they would use a lodestone. Again, it wasn't the person, it was the thing. The process, the yeah. process. So he got this from Father Hell. Mesmer gets his own lodestones. Yeah. And he starts doing his thing. He was a medical doctor, but he was kind of woo, a little bit woo. Yeah. And he starts doing this stuff and he couldn't st- he had a patient whose wrist he'd opened and is bleeding into a bowl. And he realizes to his unmitigated horror. Oh my goodness. He's left I his have, magnets like at home or something. I forgot them in the car. So he freaks. He, I was looking to see if there was one. There isn't. He grabs a wooden pointer like you use on a blackboard. Oh, hold on. And he you got one. I mean, no, but I've got magnets for you. Here, oh, here, here's some lodestones. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> Irrelevant. So anyway, thank you though. Mm. He passes the... He passes this pointer over the incision of the radial artery. It's funny. Hey, in hey, other words, there's our word he, radius. He was faking it. There's our it. word radius. Yeah, there you go. We so, got it. No, so Mesmer from, faked it. Yeah, and it worked. Yeah. The bleeding stopped. And the indirect suggestion. Now, Mesmer makes a categorical fallacy. <laughs> he makes an error. He doesn't go, oh, obviously the magnets are nothing to do with it. Something else is going on. He takes it one further Optimus and says, razor. that's something else. It's me. I have magnetic powers. I don't need lodestones. I am Mesmer Man. He becomes the first X-Man, actually becomes Magneto. He believes he has these animal magnetic powers. And he goes on a tirade and he opens clinics and he magnetizes trees and people touch him and do the funky check mm-hmm. and freak out. And he had seances with a big backette full of water, not seances with the dead. And people would hold on to iron rods and wine bottles, mostly young women, like Charcot, more about that later. And he'd come into the room with a turban on yeah. and a magic wand and prestige. prestige. Oh, look at that. We didn't even have that in our notes. No, but Prestige is a major power and it goes to show you. So by the way, if anyone ever asks you what Mesmer brought to the scientific no, world of nothing hypnosis, to science, but he did bring it prestige. was nothing. nothing. But what did he bring to hypnosis? Prestige. He certainly bought prestige. Yes, but scientifically- Nothing. That's correct. 